Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to create a cannon uh, using the Box 2D physics in GameMaker. Uh, this was another tutorial request, uh, so let's get started. Um, so with the sprites, we have SPL ball, uh, 32 by 32 ball centered to be at the origin of 16 by 16, uh, wall 32 by 32, again centered, um, and a cannon extremely well drawn, uh, it's 128 by 64 and its origin is 26 at 34 just to make it so that the uh, base of the cannon kind of rotates at its uh, center of gravity there. Okay, um, yeah, none of the objects. Alright, so we start off, uh, this is probably one of the most important objects is OBJ physics parent. I've used this in pretty much every one of my other physics tutorials. Um, and all it is is an object that has a collision event with itself and just the comment collision in that to make sure that the uh, event actually stays there. And that will provide the collision for all the uh, physics objects in this tutorial. Okay, uh, next we have OBJ wall. Uh, that is parented to the physics parent. Uh, uses physics, it's ticked, it has the uh, SPR wall and its collision mask is just to go around the wall. Um, that's just to give us something to actually shoot at, and um, oh, its density is set to zero to make sure that it's not going to move anywhere when the uh, gravity starts taking effect. Alright, uh, OBJ ball. Uh, it's got the ball sprite, uses physics, parented to the physics parent, uh, circle collision shape, and its density and stuff hasn't been changed, so it's still 0 0.5, so gravity will affect it. Alright. Um, and then OBJ Cannon, and this is where we actually start programming the uh, cannon. So uh, if you just make this object, uh, give it the sprite, and tick uses physics for the collision circle, it doesn't matter how big it is, it's just there so we can make a joint, so it's not really an issue. Um, but as you can see, mine's uh, about 32 pixels, I think, uh, maybe a bit more. But yeah, it doesn't really matter about the, uh, the collision shape. That looked off something then. Oh, okay. Alright, um, its density is set to zero to make sure it's not going to be moving anywhere. And uh, once that's done, if you just want to start setting up a room, so as you can see here, I've got the uh, the ball up the top here, which is going to fall down onto the cannon. Um, the cannon just sits there and is rotated to point um, up towards the uh, wall. And then I've made like a cruddy little ramp here to make the ball roll back down into the cannon again. I've got a roof up so that it's not going to shoot out of the uh, the room. Okay, uh, with that done, we're ready to get started. Alright, so as always, we're starting the create event. Okay, J, uh, that stands for joint, and we're going to be using one joint to make this work, so we just have the variable J set to minus one for now, because there is no joint um, at the start of the game. Alright, can join equals true, so we need to decide whether the, uh, the cannon can actually take the ball and uh, join it and hold it. Um, so, at the start, Yes, it can, so we set that to true. Uh, the cool time is the amount of time it has uh, after shooting before it can make it join again, so I've got that set to half a second. Uh, room speed is one second, um, is the amount of steps per second, so room speed divided by two gives us one second, divided by two gives us half a second. Okay, um, ball, that's just going to be the uh, ball that the uh, that the cannon is holding, it's just a variable to store that object's ID, that's set to no one for now. And our uh, P is our power, and I've got that to set to 600. Obviously, the higher the uh, number, the more power put into the shot. Okay, um, forgot to explain just before, so I'll do it now. Now, uh, the cannon is actually going to, when the ball collides with it, the cannon will grab onto the ball, hold it for a second, and then shoot it off. Um, so that's why we're actually creating a joint there and um, storing the ball ID. Okay, uh, next we'll go to the step and then we'll go back to the alarms after that. Okay, in the step event, this is for grabbing onto the ball. Okay, so if the ball exists um, and if uh, place meeting X, Y and that ball, so if um, there is a collision between the ball and the cannon, um, and at that same point in time, joint is equal to minus one, or actually J is equal to minus one, and can join is equal to true. So if we're touching the ball, there is no joint, and we are allowed to join, then 
obj ball dot phy position x equals x. Now it is important that you use phy position x because that is the physics um, fixture position. And if we're just setting its x position, then it's just not going to work um, because it, yeah, it needs to be the actual physical position of that ball. Uh, um, we set that to this cannon's x value, uh, which is uh, back where its center of gravity was, as you could see in the uh, sprite origin earlier. Uh, we then set its y position, so again, obj ball, ph y position, y equals y. Um, and then we set its uh, spin, uh, in this case, angular velocity it's called, um, and that's just the speed that it's spinning to zero. Because when the, uh, the cannon grabs onto the ball, there's a high chance that that ball might actually be spinning at that point in time. Okay, so after setting that to zero, we then create our joint, uh, which is going to hold the ball in place uh, using the uh, the physics body on the cannon and the actual ball's physics body. So to do this, we uh, set J to uh, physics joint revolute create uh, ID for this object's um, object ID, uh, OBJ ball. Um, the X and Y anchor is just this is the uh, the cannon's x and y position in the room and then for all the limits we just set them all to zero uh, so that there's no um, motor or anything like that and make sure that collide instance is set to zero because if that's set to one then you might get some funny results okay um, and then we set ball to be equal to obj ball um, which is just the uh, the variable we, we're going to be using to hold the object's id and then Alarm zero equals room speed times two. So alarm zero is the uh, the amount of time before we actually shoot the ball after catching it. So in this case, I've got that set to two, to two seconds. So after the ball is caught, it will wait two seconds and then shoot the ball. I can lower this to make it shoot faster. Okay, so we're going to go to alarm zero now, which is where the ball gets shot. Okay, so the first thing we do in alarm zero is delete the joint because we don't want to be hanging on to it when we're trying to shoot it. So we delete the joint and then set J to minus one again to so make sure that it is ready to catch another ball. Um, with ball, which is uh, which was set just before in the collision, uh, sorry not the collision event, the step event. Um, so with ball, our PHY position equals other dot image ankle times minus one. And this with command pretty much puts us inside the ball object. So we're actually executing the code from within that object and not the canon object that the code is actually typed in. So at this moment we pretty much go into that object and then within that object we set its um, physical rotation, which is PHY rotation, to be other, which then becomes the canon, uh, to be the canon's image angle times minus one. Now this times minus one is important because the ga like game maker, it's um angles go up so from 0 to 90 goes up anti-clockwise whereas uh, with box 2d the angles go up um, clockwise so from 0 to 90 is clockwise instead of anti-clockwise so to make sure that we actually get the right angle we just times that by minus 1 which will give us the correct angle okay um, and then we apply a local impulse and that will actually send the ball on its way so physics apply local impulse uh, zero for the x local, zero for the y local. Um, the x impulse local is the amount of force that we're applying. So in this case, it is other dot p, which is the power, um, and that is set to 600 for memory. Um, and then y impulse local is zero because we only want to push it um, along its x axis, which in Game Maker is uh, to the right, and that's like the front of the object. Okay, uh, can join equals false, so we can no longer um, hold on to another ball. And then alarm one equals cool time, which is the amount of time that um, the cannon waits before it actually starts trying to grab onto the ball again. Okay, so with that done, we can go to alarm one, and in alarm one, we simply set can join to true again, so that we can grab onto another ball. Okay, so I'll just go back to the step event, run through it again real quick. So we start off by checking if the ball exists. If it does, we check to make sure it's touching the cannon. If it's touching the cannon, there is no joint. And the can join is set to true. We set the ball's position 
So it's x position, the y position, and its angular velocity, which is how fast it is spinning at the time. We then create a joint and set that joint's ID to J. Uh, after that, we set ball to OBJ ball and alarm zero equals room speed times two. Okay, we then jump to the alarm. Once the alarm goes off, we start off by deleting the physics joint. We then set J to minus one so it's ready to go. We go into the ball object, set its physical rotation to be the same as the cannons, then apply a local impulse which will send it, set it on its way. Can join, we then set to false so we're not going to grab onto the ball as it's being shot away. And we set the alarm one to cool time. And then in alarm one, we set can join to true so it's ready to grab onto another ball. Okay, once that's put all together, and if you didn't set up your room before, do it now. Uh, we're ready to run the game. So this ball is going to fall down. When it touches the cannon, the cannon will grab onto it, and then it will shoot it. Okay, so the ball falls, the cannon grabs onto it, and there you go. After two seconds, it shoots the ball away. The ball should roll back down and touch the cannon again. As you can see, it grabs onto it again, and shoots the ball again. And that's about it. Now there is a flaw in this. Um, it's actually fairly old code that I wrote a while back for a different game, so I'm just going to go into the canon and show you something here. Uh, this ball variable isn't actually needed for this to work because we're actually referencing the ball itself um, as an object. Um, that would be needed if you were talking about a specific instance. So say there were multiple balls in one room, then you would be setting that to the to uh, a specific instance's ID to make sure that you're going into the right one and setting its force values. If there was more than one ball in uh, this game, then it would only grab onto one of them out of the two, and it would only actually shoot one of them um, because it's referencing OBJ ball as an object type and not a specific instance ID. Um, to fix that. Uh, what you'd want to do is check for an actual collision with an instance using a collision circle or collision line. Um, get a specific instance ID and instead of doing uh, if place meeting x, y, obj balls, you'll see actual instance ID. Um, and same here, so you'd have the instance ID stored in a variable, um, so it'd be variable name dot ph y position x, y, angular velocity, uh, instead of creating a joint with the object type, you'd create it with that variable that stores the instance. Um, and then set ball to be that instance ID uh, instead of the actual object type. Um, and then back in alarm zero, instead of going into, actually no, alarm zero is fine, because you actually go into that variable, which would then be equal to that instance ID and give you that specific instance and not the actual object type. So hopefully you understand that. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, as long as you do that, it should work fine for you. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Uh, if you have any tutorial requests, um, uh, send us a message on Facebook or just leave a comment with those. Uh, all the links are in the description, including a link to this project file. Um, if you want to keep track of what we're doing with our projects, like our actual games, uh, you can follow us on Twitter for information and fairly regular updates on that. Um, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Hope this helps you guys out.